Hi, everybody. Welcome to Grad Open House. We're going to be talking about our architecture program. And we'll give it just a minute for folks to join us. And then we'll jump right in. Uh, just a couple quick notes before we start introductions. Uh, please type your questions in the Q&A tab. Um, the chat, te things tend to get lost in there, but Jen and I will be throwing in important links as uh, Debbie is talking about them, so you'll know where to go. Um, and this event is recorded, so th that way you can um, watch it again as many times as you want. And then immediately following this event um, is the architecture 73 questions with RISD, uh, led by Debbie here. And uh, Jen just put the link on there. If you haven't registered for it, please do. Um, it's going to be a really fun kind of insider look into what RISD architecture is. And I may or may not be there myself. <laughs> um, all right, so now that we've got um, some folks here, let's start with introductions. My name is Molly Pettengill. I'm the Associate Director for Graduate Recruitment. And on my team, I have Jen. Jen, you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Jennifer Hewins, and I am the Grad Recruitment Coordinator. And of course, our star of the show, Debbie, you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Debbie Chen. I'm the Graduate Program Director here at RISD Architecture. All right, so um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can share yours, Debbie, and sure. we'll get the show started. Okay. Fantastic. All right, and before you get going, I just want to make sure, um, folks, uh, could you just raise your hand? Give me a show of hands if that you can see the full screen and hear us okay and all that good stuff. All right, awesome. Thank you. And take away, Debbie. Excellent. Um, well, hello, everybody. It's nice to see you virtually. Um, like I said earlier, my name is Debbie Chen. I am the graduate program director here at RISD Architecture. Um, welcome to our fall 22 uh, virtual graduate open house. Um, so what I wanted to spend the hour on today was really um, go through kind of where we are, give a little bit of context about uh, the architecture department at RISD, um, our culture, our values, uh, and show you examples of the work that we do, or how we approach architecture in our department, and then really kind of leave enough time to answer your questions. Um, so before I get into it, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself, because I think that's always nice to um, you know, understand um, who's talking to you in a way. So my name, so I'm Debbie. Uh, I'm a relatively new faculty member actually at RISD Architecture, but uh, part of why I'm so excited about being here at RISD is um, related to the work I do. Um, I'm a practicing architect, but my research also um, occupies kind of the shared territory between infrastructure and architecture, um, but also interrogating ways to represent that infrastructure or that practicality through questioning uh, ways of um, the sublime. And I think that part of the both and is why um, I really uh, appreciate RISD's approach to architectural pedagogy. So let me give you a little bit of context about where we are. Um, this is the RISD campus map. Uh, which some of you might be familiar with. Uh, we are located uh, really at a great location along Providence River. Um, all the buildings in orange are part of the RISD campus. And uh, we are in this building called the Baird Ewing Building, which is a little bit down to the south. But you know, from these photos, you can see that RISD itself does have a very uh, charming presence. Um, this is a view looking south from the river. Um, 
right on uh, Waterman Street here. Um, and all these kind of brick buildings are part of the RISD family. This is our lovely Fleet Library, which is uh, part of an adaptive reuse uh, old bank building, actually. Um, this lovely photo here is taken from RISD Beach, which is right here, number 70 on the map. Um, it's a lovely place where uh, grad students and undergrads gonna hang out on a lovely day. And then this is kind of a nice pedestrian bridge that takes you, um, actually it's really close to the BEB building right outside of the architecture department. And it takes you from the east side of the river to kind of the downtown side in the Julie district. So this kind of sets up uh, where we are and where I'm uh, talking to you from right in this building number eight. Um, so within this context, this larger RISD context, this is our building, the BEB, as we like to call it. Um, we are four floors and a basement. Um, just to give you a little bit of demographic information for this academic year, we have about 250 students total, give or take a few. Um, and it's about this year, it's about almost 50-50 with just a little bit more undergraduate representation. We have 110 graduate students um, and that breaks down into about 80 uh, following the three-year MARC track and 30 following the two-year MARC track. Um, I'll get into the difference uh, between those two a little bit in a little bit, um, but um, Within their building, um, you know, we are a um, fully independent architecture department, but we do like to collaborate with other departments and their facilities as well. Um, obviously we have our architecture studios, we have um, a flex space, uh, which serves as a gallery, but also as kind of a review space. Uh, we have all the kind of um, usual technology that you would expect at an architecture school in terms of workstations, software suites, plotters, printers, uh, displays, things like that. We also have a fully equipped wood shop and a CNC mill. We have laser cutters, a whole family of 3D printers. And we also have a photo studio, um, which uh, we use to take professional motto photos uh, with. Um, in terms of our student culture and representation, we have a lot of active student organizations present. Uh, we have NOMAS, AIAS, uh, we have a student publication, uh, um, uh, bi, bi yearly publication called Postmarked. We have a peer to peer mentoring program called Arc to Arc. Uh, Architecture for All is an organization that addresses the student-led organization that addresses housing inequity in the city of Providence and works with local builders um, for opportunities. Um, and then kind of outside of the department, I would say that the graduate uh, community is really fully supported by RISD at large. Um, we have the um, graduate community and experience um, liaison, which really tries to bring grad students together across different departments. Uh, along with the Center for Complexity, which um, kind of brings together RISD grad students, but also Brown grad students to engage with critical topics um, extending outside of creative practice. So hopefully that gives you a broad picture of the culture within the BEB um, as we kind of set the groundwork for um, our kind of our values um, pertaining more to architecture. Um, so a little bit about the curriculum and the MARC track here at RISD Architecture. It is a three-year MARC program. And um, what this diagram loosely lays out is the kind of um, the sequence uh, of studios and other required courses as you proceed through the three years um, of the upper band You'll see the studios that you will take from year one to year three. The second band has to do with a complementary sequence of representation courses, having to do with drawing techniques, but also modeling techniques um, ranging from the analog to the digital. 
And then we also have accompanying history theory requirements in your first year, along with a sequence of building and architectural technologies that culminates into an integrated building systems course and professional practice. So within the three years, there are three core studios, course one, two, and three. And as you uh, can see, they are progressive in the kind of the subjectivity and the focus that um, they address, starting with kind of the human subject, the tools that we use as designers, and the processes with which we design. You then move into constructions, which takes on more of a building assembly scale, and you culminate your course sequence in uh, the studio called Cities, which um, inevitably deals with issues of the urban. Um, after those three core studios, you then take a series of two advanced studios. And like other um, MR programs, the advanced studios is really an opportunity for you to find opportunities to explore topics that are more um, in line with your own research interests. Um, we have usually a, a great array of faculty members exploring anything from adaptive reuse to urban issues to questions of materiality um, and aesthetics. So this is um, usually a fantastic time within a student's um, graduate studies to really gain exposure to different modes of thinking and different modes of making. Um, lastly, you kind of culminate in uh, your thesis year, which is the third year. Students take a thesis seminar in the fall semester, which uh, bolsters your thesis research, and you end with a thesis project as your final semester in the three years. Um, like I mentioned along the way, you are picking up um, not only skills in regards to drawing and modeling, uh, but also building up your own critical thinking, which I'll talk about later um, as kind of a core tenant to the way that we approach pedagogy at RISD Architecture. So this is the three-year sequence. Um, certain students uh, who apply will enter in under a two-year advanced standing track. And um, just to be clear, when you apply, uh, you don't have to select one or the other. There, um, it's just one general application. And um, at the uh, discretion of the admissions committee, um, we review certain, we review each candidate based on certain criteria. If you meet the advanced standing track, that's usually if you, you know, graduate with a four-year architecture degree, having met certain curricular um, components that are um, outlined in detail on our website, um, RISD.edu slash architecture. And if you have any uh, questions about the advanced standing track, you can always uh, email artgrad at RISD.edu as well. But um, the, the kind of advanced standing track basically means that you still start your first year in core one um, as kind of the est establishing the foundations of our studio culture with um, the rest of your peers um, of that year. Um, but however, um, after that first semester, you then jump right into advanced studios, two of them, uh, and then you kind of round out your second year with the same sequence of thesis um, seminar and thesis project in your second year. So you can kind of see the similarities of where one starts and where one ends between the advanced standing track and then the three-year MARC track. Now I want to talk a little bit about the values that underpin RISD architecture. I know that, uh, you know, there are many uh, amazing Masters of Architecture programs out there, and I really want to highlight what makes RISD architecture unique um, so that you can uh, ascertain for yourself is this is, if this is an environment in which you would excel. So one of the things about 
RISD architecture that's special is, you know, we are an architecture school and located within an art school. And so that has, I think, a lot of influence on the way that we approach the discipline. And the first value I want to talk about is advancing analog and digital craft. Uh, for us at RISD Architecture, we don't see the analog and the digital as kind of two um, opposing tool uh, approaches to uh, the discipline or tooling and techniques. We actually see them as being in necessary dialogue with one another. Um, not only are we interested in kind of conventional ways or traditional ways of making something, we're interested in how current tools and current ways of thinking start to modify, surplant, um, and also evolve conventional ways of making. So um, as I would say, um, you know, RISD, at RISD Architecture, that these digital techniques are engaged as a continuity with the analog and um, in a dialogue that carries forward these kind of analog um, uh, predecessors. And I'll just mention that a lot of these slides are text heavy, so I'll be um, kind of um, summarizing from them and you can feel free to screenshot them as well. The second value I wanted to talk about is how we build a discursive culture of architecture here at RISD. Um, we know as educators that we're not just training architects or teaching architects that uh, will make drawings, models, and buildings. Um, rather, we like to think that we're training architects that will engage in some greater idea of public discourse, that we're training public intellectuals, and that, you know, in acknowledging that uh, spatial practice is political, we want our students to be ready to participate in these discussions, whether or not these are discussions that happen at the drawing table or the crit table or the seminar table. So with every class uh, or kind of engagement that we design, uh, we highly value and encourage discourse with our students uh, in order that they are prepared to kind of become activists um, in their own practices, whether it's um, through design work, through written work, um, or a mixture of both. Another value I want to highlight is innovating pedagogical practices. So in alignment with what I just talked about, um, the kind of building discourse, we also understand that that um, is highly entrenched in the way that we teach. So the faculty here at RISD Architecture, we're really committed to ways of teaching and the practice of teaching as an art in itself. Um, we're, we understand that, you know, it's rather than just assigning um, uh, prompts to students, we really are curious and, and committed to evaluating how we deliver certain objectives or learning objectives within the context um, that we're um, working in, right? Whether it's a social context, political context, environmental context. And this attention to pedagogy and teaching uh, translates to our students as well um, as a grad school uh, across RISD, not just within the architecture department, we are very committed to graduate teaching. So graduate students here actually have um, opportunities to design coursework for, uh, of their own and to teach courses on their own during um, our kind of interim session, which is in the winter called winter session. And um, a lot of our grad students take that opportunity. They acquire a certificate in graduate teaching as well, which um, they kind of take on with them after they leave RISD and perhaps pursue um, academia or, or some level of teaching afterwards as well. Associated with that um, teaching and kind of discourse building is a commitment to disseminating design research. So again, being an architecture school in an art school, we have a unique approach to conducting research uh, within the creative practice. So 
different from you know being in a research institution. RISD has um, its own wealth of research um, tools um, and a huge range of research methodologies that we lean on, not just uh, in the department, but also RISD at large. So we have a fantastic uh, library as I kind of pointed to in the beginning, but we also have uh, really unique resources such as special collections, um, which you know has a lot of artists' books. Um, um, artist ephemera, and we try to engage with all these um, tools uh, as part of the building of our own individual research practices and um, our students' research practices. We lean on the RISD Museum, which is a huge partner with us. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, RISD uh, has its own museum um, right here on campus, and they are really engaged with how we uh, teach in the classroom as well. So we see them as a research um, resource um, that we partner with, with a lot of our coursework. Practicing environmental ethics is one of the core uh, principles uh, that really guide us, um, you know, as opposed to setting aside very discrete objectives and values when it comes to environmental ethics and environmental practices such as sustainability, here at RISD, we, be, uh, we believe that environmental ethics really is the kind of one of the guiding factors and guiding cultural factors for how we design. So rather than approach questions of sustainability as something that can be solved strictly through technology um, or kind of um, a checklist. We like to foreground um, issues of the environment uh, within kind of every design prompt or question that we um, embark on um, in, in the studio. Another ethos or value that um, I want to highlight is how we try to mine the core of the discipline. So along with kind of refining and honing our approach to uh, what it means to practice architecture and to teach architecture, we as a faculty and also along with our students are also curious and committed to evolving the definition of the discipline as well. Um, so you know, one of our core disciplinary uh, frameworks is to maintain an active dialogue between analog digital techniques, but also uh, the tools that we're uh, using to build off of these um, techniques, um, whether or not we are um, prioritizing certain types of media, which other types of media can we um, exploit and uh, leverage. So this is an example of faculty work. Um, this is by Jess Myers, who is an assistant professor here, and she recently completed her seed fund research project, which looked at the acoustics of space. And one of the outputs of her project was actually um, really heavily emphasizing the audio experience um, of architecture, which um, is kind of um, artificial made into an, the artifact of a vinyl. As kind of maybe in stark contrast to that kind of alternative framework of thinking, we are also still committed to um, exploring and testing out um, fundamental questions of building or fabricating at one-to-one. -one. And so we at RISD Architecture still really believe engaging with ideas of um, design build and fabricating um, building or building components at real life scale. And this, um, this type of work is really in alignment with some of our other core issues too, whether it's social or environmental ethics. Um, you know, we're kind of highly aware of the um, kind of social material responsibility that we need to take as architects. And that has to uh, track all the way to um, buildings um, in 
in the real life and, and kind of the um, real material consequences of, of such decisions. And as a, along the way, our students kind of acquire the knowledge um, of fabricating a variety of um, architectural components at, at real scale. So related to that is this also this value of engaging in material ecologies. Um, our shop is a very popular place. Our students are definitely not shy from this culture of making, but also exploring through making. Um, not only are we kind of committed to uh, evolving these foundational ways of material assemblies, but we're also very curious to push forward certain constraints um, of material ecologies and assemblies, of what it means to integrate concepts such as adapter reuse in uh, what in kind of a more ad hoc, low tech way with emerging technologies such as cross laminated timber or um, textile components. So again, it's about balancing the analog and the digital, uh, not only when it comes to uh, representation or drawing, but also uh, as a way to question um, how architecture comes together, the materiality uh, in which we operate and the, the assemblies that we kind of consider to be uh, in practice. Lastly, I wanna to touch upon um, the value of cultivating just and equitable futures. So uh, hopefully um, you would agree that all the values I just outlined really stem from this commitment to designing just and equitable futures. Um, one of the unique things about being at RISD is that our SEI initiative, um, Social Equity and Inclusion Initiative applies uh, you know, first and foremost to a lot of the ways that we operate here at RISD Architecture, um, RISD at large. So, you know, rather than have studios, specific studios deal with issues of um, societal issues, political issues, um, environmental justice issues, again, these are, these SCI principles are foundational to the way that we establish our curriculum and build up our um, core sequence, but also our advanced studio frameworks. And I invite everybody to check out our SEI initiatives further um, at sei.risd.edu. Okay, so from all those um, kind of the core values I outlined at RISD Architecture, I wanna talk a little bit about how that stems into um, what we do really in the BEB, how we try to manifest these principles into uh, the ways that we are making architecture or thinking about architecture, talking about architecture. Um, so, um, you know, here in the department, we like to say that we're not just interested in making for making sake, but we are interested in making ways of making, right? So we're um, really committed to unpacking that a little bit, um, to not inherit conventions or techniques as givens uh, or as um, means to an end, but really as um, territories for investigation um, in their own right. So I'll be um, sharing student work with you of various categories that um, I think really um, espouse um, our, our culture of, of making and interrogating here. So one of the you know, key components that we like to work through here at RISD is physical model making. Um, and that physical model making can be part of a process, a design process. So you can see from these examples here that the model itself is not uh, a means of representation strictly, but it is a tool with which we um, start to catalyze new design thinking, new design directions, um, whether or not 
these students are working um, at whole scale or or one to one scale uh, or part to uh, part to whole relationships. Um, we're seeing that these models are um, ways to kind of advance the design trajectory, but also um, serve as their independent kind of aesthetic or representational um, ag agenda. On the opposite hand, we can see that, you know, we're still committed to or interested in using models as a representation technique for more complex issues such as program or site or tectonics. Um, and our students kind of learn and embrace this kind of agility in using model making as uh, not only a representation uh, technique, but also as a way to kind of further inquire or advance their um, design questions. Jumping kind of in scale, our students are also um, really excited about building things uh, at one-to-one -one scale, about design build. So, and, and this happens kind of at various points along the curriculum. So whether or not it is a you know one-to-one -one exploration of um, architectural tectonics, or kind of in this case, it's a collaboration. Um, between a RISD architecture member or a faculty member and the ceramics department making these kind of one-to-one -one ceramics uh, models to this one-to-one uh, -one, um, exhibition installation for a thesis project um, to the kind of one-to-one -one fabrication and design build project with Ultramodern, which are also um, previous faculty members. You know, our students, uh, we highly encourage our students, and I think they are also very excited to engage with the discipline um, through um, critical making. So we talked about kind of making physical elements. We're also very interested in advancing or kind of questioning the digital tools um, and how the that um, territory. So again, whether it is um, in something as foundational as um, asking what a drawing is, what kind of techniques or tools we have at our disposal to, um, to really establish that understanding of a drawing, um, you know, from kind of multiple software perspectives, such as Blender, to then kind of going backwards um, into this kind of binary uh, bitmap type of um, drawing making, you know, our digital interests span the gamut, right? Um, so students kind of have the opportunity to explore that wealth of technique, but also then start to apply those tools to their own research, um, again, within this kind of critical mindset, um, and they kind of bring it into um, environments of embed studio, but also thesis where layers of representation and um, kind of political cultural issues start to uh, really aggregate and then synthesize into really um, sophisticated and, and complex work. There's also, I'm, I feel like a lot of the projects I'm also talking about are in some ways hybrids of multiple factors. Um, so here we have students who work um, in a hybridity of analog and digital tools, whether the drawing itself or kind of representation techniques are um, part drawing, part model or part analog drawing, part uh, digital drawing. Um, you can see that we're never comfortable in kind of, again, defaulting to um, the drawing or the bottle as a given, but we're always um, kind of excited to question and, and to explore that deeper. Here again, we have now kind of hybrids of the digital with hybrids of um, physical modeling 
um, whether or not a model wants to behave as a drawing or vice versa. Um, this type of uh, agility is something that we really try to espouse and, and to nurture in the department. So that's kind of a quick snapshot of the culture and the kind of the work, uh, in, uh, the student work, um, the wealth of student work, I should say, here at RISD Architecture. Um, I did want to um, plug briefly the event that will kind of follow right after this, which in which I will take you on a um, casual tour of our building as we kind of talk to multiple people um, from different studios, um, different traject parts in their MR trajectory, talk about their work a little bit. And um, it gives you an opportunity to see kind of the, the building in action um, on our typical studio day. Um, other than that, I am really excited to hear what questions uh, you guys have for me and hopefully I can answer them. Yeah, yeah, so we do have a question right here. We actually had a couple behind the scenes, Debbie, but guys, um, do put your questions in the Q&A tab um, because emailing us in admission, sometimes we can't answer those questions as specifically. So answers, I mean, ask specific questions to Debbie, uh, curriculum wise. Uh, the first one here is, um, I saw that you have a summer foundations course. Are there other structures or ways of supporting those who do not come from a BRC or architecture background? Is that learning adapting taken on independently or by peers? or are professional or professors available to help with that, that transition? Yes, great question. And that's something that as I was explaining the curriculum, I realized I should have uh, maybe lingered on a little bit. So that um, summer foundations portion of the curriculum, just go back there, is actually a required set of classes that students entering the three-year MMARC take um, you come here, um, I think in July, um, it's a great opportunity for you to get to know your peers that are entering this, uh, you know, in your cohort. And you kind of, you take a series of courses, drawing, spatial dynamics and design, which um, not, are not only technical foundations, but are also conceptual foundations to really the architecture studio and how, um, we um, kind of approach things here uh, in the department. Yeah, sorry, I had a little coughing fit there. Um, <laughs> are there study abroad opportunities? And maybe it could I can help answer this question, Debbie. Um, so first off, I just wanted to let you guys know, yes, there are, you know, the pandemic paused that for a little bit, but we are back on. Um, and so those opportunities can happen in many different ways. Um, most of them happen through winter session. Um, I will remind you that as a graduate student, your time here is quite limited. Um, so it is sort of a, I don't wanna say risky thing to do, but um, there are opportunities to travel during winter session, which is the five week winter session um, in between the fall and the spring semester. Um, and those are really are based on the current relationships we have with other schools. Uh, we have a RISD Globals program that organizes that. But sometimes we have faculty who organize programs like shoemaking in Italy um, or printmaking in Japan. And so I think that each year that evolves and changes dependent, on, dependent upon faculty interests. And for graduate students, there's another um, extra opportunity for you guys to apply for a graduate commons grant. And that funding, um, if you were to receive that grant, which is competitive, you have to apply for it well in advance. Typically, it doesn't happen until your second year unless you're, you're a superstar and it happens your first year. Um, and, and that happens over the summer. Um, and you would apply for a grant to help fund, whether it be travel, public installation, um, you know, research abroad, um, you know, there are a lot of different opportunities beyond that. Merrim Fellowship, um, which is through the Career Center, which Jen, let's plug the Career Center right now because they have 
just a wealth of opportunities for you guys to travel. So that's just to name a few. Um, but Debbie, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, we certainly acknowledge and understand that the opportunity to travel is really um, something that makes architect architecture departments competitive. And that's something that we're trying to make room for. So actually this semester, as part of the core three studio that you see here, which is the third master's studio, um, the students are going on a one week trip to Stockholm at the end of the semester. Um, and that's an initiative that was really developed with the faculty, Jess Myers. And so we're trying to really develop more opportunities such as this travel component within a studio, which we know um, is what a lot of students you know, get excited about. So we're hoping that we can offer more of those um, opportunities moving forward and kind of built yeah. in travel through the studio. And I also think I feel like I have to mention um, the SCI funds that have made it more equitable for students to be able to afford to travel um, because we want um, students to have the experience that they should be having, right? So if you are one of those students who are like, I'm dying to do this thing, but I can't afford it, apply for some S SEI funds. Debbie or other faculty in the program will help you and guide you through that process. We have an entire office of SEI that can help um, do that as well. So there's, there's ways to do this be before you just decide it's too expensive, I can't do it, you know? Um, that's a great question. So Jen, what other questions are we seeing out here? Yeah, let's see here. Um, this is a great question. We get this a lot, not for just for this department, but for other departments. Is there an opportunity to take electives in other departments? Um, for example, um, I'd like um, uh, from the adaptive reuse um, program in, in interior architecture. Yeah, I can take that. So definitely, yes. Um, and that's one of the, I think, major. Uh, appealing like factors of coming to RISD as a grad student um, that you can take electives in other departments um, and and we know we highly encourage our students to get out there um, and explore what's outside of architecture so yeah. there are certain I would as a caveat um, you know each department has certain courses that are uh, that prioritize their departmental majors but there's also a lot of electives that, you know, they really highly encourage other um, department students to take as well. Yes, yeah. and collaborative ones as well through Graduate Commons, right? Um, I just want to put out there that we have seven minutes left because we have a session starting at 3 p.m. So as soon as 250 hits, we'll send everybody over to the 73 questions. So if you still have questions that haven't been answered, hold them for the next session or email them to archgrad at risd.edu. Um, all right, let's see. What else we got up there, Jen? Um, I'm seeing a question here and I can just um, quickly answer this, asking about the differences between architecture and interior architecture. You know, one of the best ways is this week, you know, we have a session just on interior architecture. That's going to be tomorrow actually. So, um, you know, you're getting a deep dive in architecture today and get a deep dive in, in interior architecture tomorrow. So I uh, encourage you to attend that session. Um, and then um, we do have that career center um, webinar coming up. I strongly encourage you to attend that. I don't think people realize how robust our career center is. One of the things our students always tell prospective students, the one thing they wish they did when they first came to RISD is go right away to the career center. Um, they are such um, uh, a, a wealth of knowledge. They have a tremendous amount of resources. So mm -hmm. I can't urge you enough to attend that session. Um, let's see here. Um, and then there's a question on internships. That's something that the Career Center can help um, answer as well. Um, do, do, do. Uh, Debbie, how many projects do you um, like to see for a graduate portfolio? For the um for Emark, oh, that's a tough question. I think rather than put a number on it, um, you know, I think the overarching 
thing I always tell someone when putting their portfolio together is, are we, you know, do you think it communicates your creative passion in something? When we review it, are we getting a great sense of who you are, what your creative interests are, what your pursuits are? And, and really, you know, as a graduate student, what type of work you want to keep on pursuing, right, in, in these next few years? Um, and how can RISD architecture help you advance that? So, you know, whether it's one project a page or, um, you know, two pages a project, that is, uh, in a way, up to you to curate. Um, so it's, it's hard to put a number to it. Uh, definitely not too many. You know, I think editing and providing a succinct narrative is important. So it's definitely not the case where more is better. Um, yeah, and you know what, we have um, just a uh, one more question here about the portfolio. What do you want to see in the portfolio? And I'm going to start with Debbie. I'd love to hear what you have to say, because you are the expert here. Less is more. You know, I feel like people show us architecture books um, as if they were to be displayed as books. However, what we're looking for is a curated um, selection of images from several projects. Um, you can add descriptions, but please do not put text on the image unless it's like this. I, I try to keep this like small, medium, large. That's it, right? <laughs> Um, like a title heading, totally. maybe a little sentence, maybe a little sentence, um, but then sign up for a portfolio day because we'll help you with all those little tricks and tips. And also know that most of the people applying to architecture, the work is a lot of the same kind of projects, right? Like we know what classes you've taken. Mm -hmm. uh, we know what that what assignment this was that you're that you're making work for. And what we want to know, is what's important to you in architecture? What can we learn about you, um, and what, what what your avenue or or I like to say vehicle of communication is through architecture, right? So, Debbie, what do you do, what do you have to add to that? I totally agree. Um, yeah, we less is more. Simplicity, like never underestimate the uh, effectiveness effectiveness of simplicity um let the work speak for itself and those should be i think once you have those guiding principles in place it's really about letting the work shine right um and and having a strategy for how you show that work yeah yep absolutely and that that pretty much leads us to um try to get everybody over to the next one so why don't Jen and I stay here? Debbie, you head over to the next one and we'll give it, we'll wait. Um, actually, you have to start a session right now, Jen. So we'll give it a couple of minutes. You head over there. I'll wait here. Um, and then I'll, I'll stop this session so Jen can start hers. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank Good you, session. everybody. We'll see you at the next session. Thanks, Molly. All right, I see the number ticking down. Everybody's going over to the next session. There you don't miss it. Come on, everybody. <laughs> you can't get to campus. They're doing a, a virtual tour. Yeah, they're doing a virtual tour. 73 questions. If anybody knows Vogue, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> it's going to be really cool. I'm actually going to go join that session. I'm going to be in graphic design. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, you can head over to graphic design. We got lots going on here. I am going to be listening in on my phone on my way home <laughs> to go pick up my kids, <laughs> but I definitely want to hear what these 73 questions are. So, yeah. all right, we got three, three people left. Get over there, guys. All right, we're going to cancel out this session, but you know, you can always go go in um, and register uh, in the portal for the 73 questions, the graphic design. Um, and we hope to see you at another session. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you, Jen. Bye. See you, Molly. Bye. See me. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.